Hello, and welcome to Story Impact. I'm your host, Lisa Tolles, and this YouTube series is intended to showcase authors, their writing journey, and the unique perspectives that drive the creation of their books. I started this series because of my undying love for books and stories, and because it's my calling to lift up and support other writers. I'm also a crime novelist, and you can find my books on Amazon from most retail booksellers. And to learn more, go to lisatolls.com. All right, let's get started. So today I'm so happy to welcome noted crime novelist, book editor, and my good friend, Anna, Man Anna Manwaring. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Anna is an award-winning crime novelist, a professional book editor, teacher, poet, and a former newspaper writer. Her poetry, personal narratives, book reviews, and short stories have appeared in many publications, including the California Quarterly, Morning Haiku, and Mystery Reader's Journal. Her travels in Mexico were the inspiration behind her memoir, Saints and Skeletons, as well as her Jade Ann Stone crime thriller series, and we're going to talk more about that. Using her life experience, as well as degrees in education, English Lit, and Linguistics, Anna teaches creative writing in California's wine country. Anna, I'm so glad you're here, and warmest welcome. Lisa, thank you so much for inviting me to Story Impact. I'm really excited. <laughs> Great. All right, so let's dive in so viewers can get to know you a bit. Um, let's start with this question. How do you think your early life prepared you for a life of writing? Hmm. I was kind of a dreamy kid. Uh, my dad described me as ethereal, although I didn't know what it meant at the time. Uh, I would have to agree. Uh, my favorite activity was climbing a madrone tree in the forest surrounding our house and telling myself stories. Um, also, the, my family were readers, and our house was filled with reading material. Uh, in third grade, instead of writing my report on dinosaurs, I wrote a short story, Me and My Dinosaur. And again, I did that in my medieval history class when I was in college. And I got A's both times. So I somehow, somewhere... At, I knew all along I would be a writer and a crime writer. It was the Pink Motel that I read in 1959 that told me I was going to be a crime writer. Mm. All right. So speaking of um, of crimes, tell me about your writing niche, meaning the specific genre or subgenre, because uh, you and I both know that within the um, in the crime and mystery genre, there are a lot of subgenres. And if all of your books are within this narrow niche, uh, or if you cross genres? Well, unfortunately, for contracting with traditional publishers, my thrillers do not fit into the standard genre. Uh, the Jane Ann Stone Mexico Adventures series is not a series, it's a serial. Uh, each, meet, each book picks up where the last book leaves off for four books and that is not particularly popular with publishers um and everything I, I write in the first person point of view and the sidekick is a dog and the subplots and supporting characters are presented in more of a soap opera style than these characters being mere supporters so this pulls me out of the specific genre, but I call them suspense thrillers, and I think they're thrilling and suspenseful. They uh, they definitely are. I can attest to that. All right, so I, I want to ask you this question as both a writer and an editor and a teacher who works with writers. So the question is, um, do you write for this market or do your... Um, or do your books reflect what's in your heart and you found that niche later? In other words, um, like, do you personally and do you guide your students to write for a certain market? Because it's very marketable right now. It's very hot. Readers are reading a lot of it and it's going to get them better acceptance rates with publishers. Or do you guide people and do you personally just write what's in here and find a market later? 
Oh, I absolutely do not try to push people into writing to a market. Um, it, I just don't think the books are as good when all you're doing is trying to sell books. I mean, that seems seems wrong to me. Um, for me personally, I've set my series in 2007 Mexico when the Mexican president declared war on the cartels. I don't deal with drugs, but the cartels were into a lot of other criminal activity and I'm particularly appalled but by what I feel is the most evil activity in human ex existence, the buying and selling of humans for profit. And that comes from me, that's what I believe. And that is what I write about. Um, at the time, Mexico was one of the largest human trafficking markets in the world for the, both the sex trade and slave labor. Um, and because of graft and tax laws, it was a big transshipment point for traffic people from around the world. And I wanted to write a story that brought to light this travesty, which I've done over the first four books. The fifth book, which is quite different, looks at illegal gun sales in Mexico, um, but it's still the same theme, greed. And I think that's what imp what's important. I think you need to write what, what excites you. And excitement may not be happy. This is not necessarily happy, although my books aren't unhappy books either. Yeah, you're you're addressing things like um like like justice and some and some common universal themes, and I think you do that very well. Thank All right, you. shifting into books that you read, what types of books excite you the most lately? Well, thrillers and cozy or traditional mysteries are my favorite. Um, I like to read. I'm a member of Sisters in Crime uh, organization, the Northern California branch. And I like to read books by my siblings. Uh, and I'm going to give a shout out to our host, Lisa Tolls, whose books top my list for suspenseful, action-packed adventure and thoughtful themes. Uh, she's got a new book coming out, which I've had the privilege to be an early reader. And it is fantastic. So don't miss it. Uh, that'll be at the end of the month. Um, and I also love a good laugh. I'm hooked on Reese Bowen's Her Royal Spinus series set in the 1930s England uh, in the royal family. And I've recently fallen in love with T.E. MacArthur's paranormal thrillers set in the Southwest. Mm. Um, and as for literature, I will read the big prize winners. Um, my favorite book this year in the literature category was Geraldine Brooks's Horse, set now and in the 1800s, dealing with racism, slavery, and greed. There's that theme again. All right. Thank you for those reflections and so kind of you to mention my books. Um, <laughs> I didn't tell her to say that, by the way. No, not at all. All right. Um, so. You, you've been you, you've been um, you've been writing and in various parts of the writing industry for a long time. What do you think is wrong with the publishing industry right now? And then conversely, what do you see as promising? What do you see as a promising new opportunity or new opportunities in the publishing landscape? Wow, this is kind of a hard question. Um, my opinion is that the publishing in the publishing climate today, the deck is stacked against the writer, no matter how accomplished, uh, especially writers who are not ready to wear a lot of different hats. The publishing company wants to sell books. Writers want to sell books, but the publishing company isn't guiding the uh, uh, not company, the industry is really not guiding careers anymore and building writers. Uh, you have to be able to build your own career. And that, of course, 
has to do with marketing. And that's a big part of this. Uh, the big publishers, it's the big five or is it three now, um, expect you to do most of your own marketing. Uh, and frankly, that's part of the excitement of all of this, especially if you have an entrepreneurial spirit. The But publishing contracts are hard to get. Smaller publishers are often a better bet or self-publishing, which doesn't come with the stigma it used to. Um, however, you are going to have to be able to market. And the opportunities, the pathways are amazing. Things that barely existed 20 years ago are open to us. As authors, we can find and cater to our own tribes now. Uh, I think the new publishing really is wide open and super creative. It's scary and there's tons to learn unless maybe you have a background in marketing and computers. Uh, but isn't that what's part of make of what makes life grand? Over, overcoming obstacles? That's right. All right. Well, staying on the theme of marketing, that's a good segue. How do you personally juggle um, writing and the, the writing and marketing parts of your writing journey? Like, do you have days of the week that you only do marketing and other days of the week that you only do writing? Or is it all just kind of a mishmash or does it kind of depend on what your goals are? <laughs> well, let's first establish what I am. I'm a procrastinator. I like to call it composting, meaning I'll do anything, iron, wash windows, you name it, to avoid writing or promoting. Uh, to get a handle on the tasks I need to manage, I keep a journal, which you probably can't see very well. No, I can see it. We can okay. see it. Hold, hold it higher. Hold it a little higher. Where I list everything I need to accomplish on a daily and weekly schedule. Mm -hmm. And I break down my schedule of marketing into daily tasks. I think everybody agrees that one small step is easier than the smorgasbord of to-dos. So I give myself a task a day and I tick them off when I'm done. And if I can't get it done, I aim it to the next day and add it to the next day. So I try to get everything done, which includes the writing as well. Writing isn't my favorite activity. Once I get into it, I enjoy it. Uh, frankly, my favorite activity is uh, editing. I like to revise, I like to edit. Uh, I do one other thing or two other things. I attend two daily Zoom write-ins through Sisters in Crime where we meet and we write so that I'm accountable. I said I'm coming. I have to go. I sit down and I write. And I also use NaNoWriMo, which is going on now. And for anybody who doesn't know, it's uh, an international writing contest in November, 50,000 words in 30 days, and you win a rough draft, or in my case, about two thirds of a rough draft. Um, I Four of my books are nano rough draft books. Mm. So these are, these are the tricks I use to be able to get the work done. That's great. And I, I definitely can um, ha have experienced and see the value in the essence of community, a writing community to keep you accountable and really just keep you company. I mean, writing is kind of lonely. So yeah, I get so much um, so much benefit and uh, out, out of those write-ins too. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. You know, I'd like to just add a little something. Before COVID and Zoom, we didn't, we got together, we had community, but it wasn't quite like this. Now, everything has changed. You know, we can be with people all the time. I actually grew and expanded 
and stepped up through COVID. COVID wasn't terrible for me. I never felt lonely or uh, isolated. It, it was good. It's changed okay. our world. It, it has def definitely that. All right. So this series, um, Story Impact, is all about the impact, meaning, and purpose of our writing on our reading community. And also the impact that our writing has kind of like coming back on us too. So thinking about that, what impact do you think your books have on your reading community? Well, number one, I hope people are entertained. Um, something that I learned in my master's program for teaching English as a second language, when people are happy and relaxed, they learn more. And so the first thing is, I want my readers to be entertained. I want them to not be able to turn the light off, even though it's midnight, because they're so entertained. But what the, I really want is for people to see what's going on in Mexico. Yes, we get news, but we don't, you know, you get the bad stuff, but you don't know what this place really is. And Mexico is a beautiful, wonderful, magical country with lovely people. And it's a travesty what's going on there. Um, I'm hoping that people will become familiar and motivated to take a stand against trafficking. And I'll just say trafficking because there's a lot of different trafficking. Right now, fentanyl is the big deal. And, you know, if people become interested, they'll pay more attention, they'll take a stand. Mm -hmm. So you're okay. also ed so you're also educating readers um, based on your um, your lived experience being in Mexico and all of your copious research, but in, but within the container of fiction and entertainment. And I think that's uh, I think that's wonderful. Um, what meaning do you think your stories bring to you and your readers? And then the next question is also, what would you say is your purpose as a writer? I think for some people, those questions kind of go um sort of flow into each other but um any thoughts on that yeah i have a few thoughts and i'd say uh meaning to me well i think i've already expressed that living in mexico was uh the highlight of my life well one of them um it was fantastic and when i write about mexico i get to think about all the wonderful experiences I had, the not so wonderful experiences I had, uh, the great people I met, the not so great people I met. I mean, I get to remember this rich, fantastic experience. And I did write a memoir that talks about a lot of my own direct experience. Let me say, I had no experience with the cartels that I knew of. Um, but... <laughs> Mexico, yes, and especially the food. Oh, I love Mexican food. Um, so I'm hoping that some of what I love trans transfers to my readers and that they have vicarious trips to Mexico. I've described my books as good beach reads, um, you know, good, uh, what's it called? Uh, spring break reads. Although I'm sure on spring break, none of the young people are reading thrillers there. You never know. Never know. Having wet t-shirt contests. <laughs> Something that's sort of out of my category. Um, so as, as uh, the purpose, well, I'm not entirely sure in a way, the writing is more of a calling, even though it's not my favorite activity until I get into it. Um, I can't not write. I mean, there's always something I'm writing, even if it's my daily journal. Um, and 
if I can bring an experience to somebody else that maybe they couldn't have, or maybe they'd be inspired to go and have a similar experience, uh, that's that means a lot to me. Um, that makes sense. You know, I've always sort of thought of my purpose as helping writers get going. Mm -hmm. my, my writing classes, I actually work with senior citizens who have retired and want to write. Mm -hmm. And I help launch people into their writing careers for whatever their purpose is. Many are want to leave a legacy some want to be published. There's a lot of reasons to write. Some just have things they have to say. Mm -hmm. And so I've always thought of my purpose more as the teacher, but perhaps some of my writing works similarly. All right. So um, coming to the end um, here, I have one question I want to ask. And what book would you like to promote to our watchers today? I am super excited. Oh, we've all got it. <laughs> um, backlash, backlash, venom and vengeance from Nam, Vietnam. Uh, this book came out yesterday. It's number five in the Jade Ann Stone, thank you, Mexico Adventures. And it's a departure from the usual style. This is the story of Jade Ann, the protagonist's father. He had been in Vietnam. He had experiences. He had trouble. He made an enemy. We're in 2007, Mexico, and his enemy has come and what has a vendetta and Quint who is the protagonist of this particular book um doesn't know why and he's got to figure it out and he's got to stop this man before um he takes out Quint and everyone Quint loves uh and Jay Dan actually is not in the book until the last paragraph uh, except on the telephone, but she's never out of the book either. Uh, so I hope people like it. I wrote this one in the third person, not in the first person, because uh, Jade Ann is the first person point of view of the series. Uh, and I don't know, this is part of why going back to that question of the genre, it's part of why I don't fit directly into the thriller genre. I don't know that anybody's done this before. Maybe. That's but awesome. I'm excited. Well, I'm excited too. And warmest congratulations on your release. Okay. Just to recap, Anna's um, fifth book in her series, Backlash, came out yesterday on November 15th. And, um, and again, this is Story Impact, a YouTube series intended to showcase authors their writing journey, and their unique perspectives that drive the creation of their books. Please look up Anna Manwaring at AnnaManwaring.com, and you can find her books on Amazon. And thank you so much for joining us. Anna, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. This has been wonderful. Thank you.